I'm telling y'all, I would have saved myself so much stress, sleepless nights, and money if I would have watched a video like this before I rented my first apartment in LA. <laughs> What is up everybody? It's your girl Tyra and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I create resources for black creatives who want to escape fear and share their creativity with the world without compromising their faith in God, their creativity or their integrity and most importantly without breaking the bank. And today we are going to be diving into nine things you should know before you rent your first apartment in LA. Now there are a lot of common mistakes people make before they rent their first apartment out in LA and I hope this video can alleviate some unnecessary stress for you guys looking to move out to LA in the near future. So this video will be geared towards renting an apartment in your name. There are other options like hostels or Airbnbs or even subletting, but specifically in this video, we're gonna talk about renting an apartment signing a lease in your name. Let's get into the video. Number one is you don't have to start your search super early on. So out here in LA, apartments go super fast and that's because everybody's always moving, people are always moving out here to the West Coast and all of that. So you don't have to start super early and I know that may sound counterintuitive, but you can honestly go look at an apartment and you could be signing a lease in two, three days depending on the apartment complex or the apartment building that you have just applied for an apartment in. Now, when I was looking to move into my second apartment, I was like, you know what? I wanna make sure that I get the best thing. I'm gonna start looking three months in advance. So I started calling around and when people would ask me, when are you looking to move? And I said, in about three months, people would hang up on me. They would say, okay, call us back closer to the date before we even schedule a viewing because we don't want you to waste our time talking about three months. Obviously, you're looking at a lot of spaces. So that was really frustrating because they really didn't even take me seriously because I still had three months left on my current lease. Now, if I would have said, I'm looking to move in in the next week, oh, they would have pulled all the strings. They would have pulled out all the stops. They would have said, you know what, come in. We got some Fiji water for you. We also got, you know, some M&Ms. If you like M&Ms, you can have them while we view in the apartment. They would have done all of that stuff. So keep that in mind if you're planning to move out to LA in like six months it's not really gonna do you a lot of good to start looking that early. Number two is the pictures don't always match the unit. Now this is just for more so for smaller buildings, not really huge apartment complexes that have multiple properties and stuff. And actually out here in LA, there are tons of small owned apartment buildings. And I didn't really realize that when I first moved out here. But what I did realize when I was looking for apartments in the $1,000, $1,200 range, or even up to $1,500 for like studios, the pictures didn't necessarily match the units that were available. And I think they do this because in smaller apartment buildings, they either, I, I don't know, maybe they don't have a lot of money and all of the units get um, upgraded at different times. They have like different appliances or even different amenities. Some may have something that another unit doesn't and they just use photos from whatever unit they have at the time, and they may reuse those photos even though the unit that you're actually trying to rent out may look different. It may have pink backslash when you thought it was just white porcelain like subway tiles in the kitchen, you know? Or it may say that it came with a refrigerator, and we'll talk on that later, but it may say it came with a refrigerator and you find out that it don't. Which leads me to my next point. Not all apartments out in LA are going to have a refrigerator or a stove or both. I thought this was the weirdest thing ever when I moved out to LA. And if you are a Trill OG and you've been following me for a long time, you would have seen my apartment search or my apartment hunt video that I posted back in 2018. And I showed you guys a couple of units that either didn't have a refrigerator or didn't have a stove. And I just thought this was the weirdest thing. Granted, the apartment that I used to stay in, by the way, moved into a new space. I know it may sound a little echoey in here because it's still pretty empty, but the apartment that I lived 
then prior to this didn't come with a refrigerator and I had to buy my own refrigerator. And some apartment complexes do rent out their appliances, but I think that's so stupid because they'll charge you like $25, $50 a month when you can go and buy a brand new refrigerator for $300. But then the caveat to that is once you move out of that sucker, you gotta get rid of it. And people don't really like to buy refrigerators. I found that out the hard way. I had literally had to give mine away for free. And it was only a year and a half old. <laughs> and some of you may be like, well, why don't they have refrigerators and stoves? This is a personal opinion. I think they may not have them because one, smaller, and this is really mainly in smaller buildings. I live in a luxury building now, came with all of the amenities, including washer and dryer. And I noticed as I raised my budget, those apartments that I was looking at when my budget was in the 2000s had all the appliances I needed. But I think they don't keep them because of the upkeep. You have to replace refrigerators. Some people are nasty, you know what I mean? In the past, they may have had to buy refrigerators after every tenant moved out. And they're like, you know what? We just not gonna include a refrigerator because they gonna buy one because they ain't gonna live here without a refrigerator. So, you know, that's what I think. Number four is to make sure that you test your commute. Now, I lived in Koreatown for a long time and I was like, central, I can get everywhere that I need to be, but test your commute because sometimes Google Maps be tripping. It'll say that your commute is 20 minutes, but in that commute, you may have to walk half a mile, catch a bus and catch the subway to get to where you're going. So it really depends on your preferences. But when I lived in Koreatown in my first apartment, I, typed in where I was working at the time and it was like an hour commute and I was like, okay, you know what? That's not really bad. But like I said, I had to walk almost a mile. I had to take a bus and I also had to take the freaking subway to get to work. And that just got to be a lot, especially with all of the moving between different modes of transportation. It was just the most. So make sure you test your commute to see if you're okay with it before you move into that new space. Number five is to make sure that you actually view the unit before you move in. Like I said, the pictures don't be matching. You don't want to rent out an apartment sight unseen. You want to make sure that you're getting everything that you need, especially if you have a lower budget in the lower $1,000 range, like a thousand to 1200. You want to make sure you look at that space because those smaller buildings will really try to get you with that. I had to do that for a friend in DC. She was living in DC and trying to move out to LA and she really liked this unit. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go look at this unit for you. And when I went to look at it, I was like, girl, these, this unit don't look like these pictures. It's dirty in here. It got all types of cobwebs and just dirt on the walls. And it looks very rickety and old. And the apartment building was right next to an overpass and it was filled with homeless people. Now, I'm not saying that homeless people are bad and you don't want to be around them, but She's a single girl, just moving out to LA, probably gonna be commuting without a car. So take all of that into account. So you really wanna be able to see the area and really get a feel for what it will be like to live in that space. Maybe they have noisy neighbors. Maybe you don't like weed smoke and the next door neighbor smokes weed. You would not know that unless you went and actually viewed that space. Number six is don't make too many compromises. I did this in two apartments. My first apartment didn't have parking. Didn't have a car at the time, so I was like, you know what, it's okay. I'll just deal with it because I only have a car the second half of the year of me living here and maybe I'll move. When I got my car, it was horrible. Also in my second apartment, it didn't have central AC. My air unit or my wall unit was so loud that it was hard to create YouTube videos with the air on, so I was hot every single day that I was filming videos. And I had a unit where my window was facing another building. So I got no direct sunlight and that really was a downer on my mood. So make sure you're not making too many compromises because there is the perfect apartment out there with all of the things that you want for the price you are willing to pay. Number seven is read your lease multiple times. <sighs> I have just been scarred. My first apartment, y'all, it was really nice. I actually loved the space, but I wasn't aware that I was on a 13 month lease. There was nowhere in my lease that was bolded to say it was 13 months. Apparently this is something that smaller buildings do out here in LA and it's kind of common, but I wasn't aware of that, especially coming from Louisiana and the East Coast, 12 month lease. 
six month, 12 month, 18 month, you know, but 13 month lease, I wasn't aware of something like that. And I got charged because in my mind, I'm thinking I move out after month 12, but I had a whole month left and I had to pay a fine or I had to pay a fee for moving out early. And in reality, I could have just stayed that extra month if I would have read my lease once again to double check that I was actually supposed to move out when I did. And another thing is a lot of leases in especially smaller buildings, if you stay in that apartment for less than two years, you will have to pay all types of higher fees because you have a shorter term rental versus you staying two, three, four years in your space. But on top of that, especially if it's in an area that's not rent controlled, your rent can increase up to like 10% every single year. And you wanna make sure that you're reading your lease and figuring out what all of those parameters are so you can be equipped with the knowledge before you even sign that lease in the first place. Number eight is you can register your pet as an emotional support animal. So I have a dog, her name is Lexi. She's been on the channel a few times. And one of my friends was telling me, you can register your animal as an emotional support animal if they indeed are there for emotional support. Now I've had Lexi since I was 10 years old. She is 100% an emotional support animal. And fun fact about me, I used to have a lot of night terrors. I haven't been having them much recently, but I used to have a lot of night terrors and I lived alone and I would just need someone to care about me and hold and you know, really have that sense of companionship. So I went to this place called like New Wellness dog center. I don't really know. And I had to have an interview by a therapist to see if my dog actually qualified. And she did. Now what this does is it will waive pet rent. Pet rent can be expensive, you guys. And the deposit is crazy. A lot of places want you to pay like a $300 to $500 deposit. And then pet rent is like $50 to $100 on top of your regular rent just because you have a pet. Lexi is six pounds, she's a teacup poodle. I'm not about to pay you a $500 deposit for no teacup poodle, you know? So that is also an option if you're hesitant about bringing your animal because of the fees that will go along with that. It is a possibility that you can register them as an emotional support animal. And the last tip, which is the big kahuna, you guys, and I wanna say this because I wish someone had said this to me, is you have tenant rights. In my last apartment, Touched on this a little bit. Absolutely grateful for the space. I'm grateful for the price I was paying. I'm grateful for the growth that I had while I was living in that space. But y'all, it was infested with roaches. The building was. I would go downstairs into the laundry room and there would be just roaches of all sizes inside the washers. You would see them all in the garage. Understandable there. In the hallways, in my apartment. When I moved out, <laughs> Let's not even get to that. You already know what you find when you move out. But when I had to move my refrigerator, ridiculous. So with that being said, you have the right to a clean and habitable space. And this means that there is running water, cold and hot. It is a roof over your head. It's not leaking water onto you. And it is free of pests and vermin. Now, you know, every now and then you may see a roach, but or any type of other bug or vermin, but when you're seeing them <laughs> in copious amounts, there's a problem. So I wanna read some of my notes to you guys because I actually looked up on the website. If you're interested in learning more about tenant rights, definitely look it up so you can be equipped with the knowledge in case you have to use this stuff. But if your unit is uninhabitable, the landlord is supposed to immediately fix the issue. Granted, you have to tell them about the issue first. And technically the landlord is not supposed to collect rent for that unit until it's habitable again. But don't get stopped right there. There's a lot of technicalities on it. Technically you're supposed to still pay rent, but it goes to a separate account and then the landlord will get the rent after they pay or you'll get reduced rent. All types of technicalities on that but the landlord is supposed to fix the problem before you pay any rent to them again. And if your landlord does not fix the problem, you should first tell them verbally, and if they don't do anything about it, give them a dated letter with details of the issues, 
take time stamp photos you guys have all of your receipts I'm telling you and have all of that just in case you need to show it in court or you need to show your landlord or the city at a later date and you can also initiate a city inspection process which sends the landlord a letter telling them to fix these issues fast but if the problem doesn't get fixed after the 60 day notice you can sue your landlord for the rent you pay while living in a gross place so it is like a time consuming process but you guys do have tenant rights so if you're looking to move out here in LA and you move into a space and you find out that it got vermin and it's infested or it's uninhabitable it's, it's below what you think it should be because of pests, leaks, not having hot water, all of that stuff, take it to the city. Take it to your landlord first, but then take it to your city. You have rights. But like I said, especially number nine, I wish I knew that beforehand, but over time, I've also realized that as a whole, Koreatown has a lot of roaches. I don't know what it is about that area. Maybe it's the increase in homelessness or just people being dirty and not throwing their trash away or whatever the case may be, I don't really know. But I planned on staying in Koreatown longer, just moving out of that apartment and I started reading Google reviews. Everyone had roach problems in Koreatown. So I said, you know what? Got a blast. Let me get out of Koreatown so I've moved out to the valley. But that is all I have for you guys today. I really hope you learned something and I really hope you guys take these tips into consideration when you move into your new apartment in LA or wherever you plan on moving. Thank you guys again so much. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below and make sure your notifications are on so you can get all of the alerts anytime your girl posts any new content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.